Welcome to Resource Grinds, your in-depth guide into resource farming in Fallout 76. In each episode of this ongoing series, I'll be focusing on a single resource, breaking down its availability by workshop, mining, scrapping, and camp placement, if applicable. Along the way, I'll provide additional tips on how you can maximize the yield of your farming efforts so you can focus more on playing the game and less on collecting materials. In today's video, I'll show you where to find fusion cores, one of Fallout 76's most sought after resources. While they may not be considered a resource in the traditional sense, they can be farmed nonetheless, so today I'll be showing you where to do that via workshops, looting, crafting, and events. I'll also go over the relevant perk cards and provide some tips that you can use to make your existing supply of cores last a little longer. Fusion cores are vital to any player using power armor or yielding a gatling laser, and there are few worse feelings than realizing that you've suddenly run out. As with the last episode, supplemental video notes and full resolution exports of resource maps will be provided on the Firebase Prime website, which you can access at the URL currently being displayed. I've also included the link in the description down below. On a final note before we start, Twitter user at MadDogGrot recently found references to a fusion core charging station in a PTS data mine. As that may have implications on what's about to be covered, I'll post a supplemental video after the item goes live and drop a card for it here. But without any further delay, let's get into it. When it comes to farming fusion cores, your best option is going to be generating them through workshops, especially if you have access to a private world and don't have to constantly worry about other players contesting your ownership. There are only three workshops that allow you to generate cores, those being the Poseidon Energy Plant Yard, the Bananga Plant Yard, and the Thunder Mountain Power Plant Yard. At each of these locations, you'll find a single pre-built fusion core generator, which, once powered, will generate up to eight cores an hour or one core every seven and a half minutes. That means that if you take over all three workshops, you can generate up to 24 cores per hour. There are a few important things to keep in mind, however. First off, fusion core generators have a capacity limit of three. With this in mind, you'll need to visit each workshop a few times every hour to get the highest possible yield. Secondly, as with other workshops, a defense event will trigger for the workshop shortly after you've taken it over, and will continue to occasionally trigger throughout your ownership of the workshop. Because the enemy type for these events is randomized and can potentially be a Scorch Beast attack, which, unlike other enemy types, will immediately begin as soon as the event triggers, I would recommend not placing any turrets near the fusion core generator itself. These turrets will quickly be attacked, resulting in collateral damage if not the destruction of both the fusion core generator and attached power generator if built. Repairs to either piece of equipment are costly in terms of required materials, so keeping Scorch Beast attacks directed at other parts of the workshop will save you a lot of frustration. Along the same lines, while clearing out the enemies to take each workshop, also try not to aim at the fusion core generator when clearing out the inhabiting enemies as you're capable of causing damage to it until you've completed the workshop's takeover. Finally, unlike other resource collectors which require relatively low amounts of power to operate, fusion core generators require 100 power each. This means that you'll need to build a dedicated fusion generator for each fusion core generator, or power up the workshop's attached nuclear power plant. While I almost always opt to just build a dedicated fusion generator, Powering up one or more of the nuclear power plants may be a viable route to take if you plan on taking over other workshops, as not only will doing so provide the attached plant yard with 400 power, but will also provide 100 power each to select workshops. More specifically, powering up the Poseidon Energy Plant will provide 400 power to the Poseidon Energy Plant Yard, and 100 power each to Billings Homestead, Grafton Steel Yard, Lakeside Cabins, Sunshine Meadow Industrial Farm, and Wade Airport. Powering up the Monanga Power Plant will provide 400 power to the Monanga Plant Yard and 100 power each to the Converted Munitions Factory, Federal Disposal Field HC-21, and the Red Rocket Megastop. And finally, powering up the Thunder Mountain Power Plant will provide 400 power to the Thunder Mountain Power Plant Yard and 100 power each to Abandoned Bogtown and Berkeley Springs West. To power up one of the plants, simply complete the plant's powering up event, which will automatically begin when approaching the plant if not already in progress. The event will not trigger if the plant is already back online, which will be visually indicated by steam rising from the plant's cooling towers. While a detailed rundown of the powering up event is beyond the scope of this video, 
Each of the three variants of this event will require you to make repairs to the given plant's reactor system, generator system, and cooling system, ultimately ending with a restart of the plant, as long as you do so before the event's one hour timer runs out. On a final note regarding workshops, it's worth noting that each of the plant yards can also be a good source of other resources. Specifically, the Poseidon Yard provides nodes for collecting aluminum, concrete, lead, and uranium ore, which can be smelted into nuclear material, the Monaga Yard contains nodes for uranium ore and acid, and finally, the Thunder Mountain Yard contains nodes for crystal, uranium ore, steel, and wood. Several fusion cores may be found across Appalachia with varying degrees of charge. Fully charged cores may be found tucked away at various locations across the map as loose items. Cores with a 50% charge may sometimes be found as loose items, but will most often be found socketed into one of the fusion generators found throughout Appalachia, excluding the ones built by players. And finally, any power armor chassis that you come across that was spawned in by the game will contain a core with a 25% charge, unless the core has already been looted by another player. Both fusion cores and power armor chassis have set spawn points, but not a 100% spawn chance, so you may have to check a few locations before finding any cores, especially when playing on a public world. In addition to the spawn locations just mentioned, fusion cores have a chance of being found in any container at military locations across the map, as well as in steamer trunks. If you have the scrounger perk equipped, you'll have an increased chance of finding fusion cores in any ammo box that the perk kicks in for, as the type of extra ammunition provided by the perk is randomized. In terms of enemy drops, fusion cores may be dropped by downed sentry bots, rad toads, anglers, and feral ghouls. While research indicates that the Brotherhood of Steel Collectron has a chance of generating fusion cores, this is an enclave channel and I am unwilling to welcome such heresy into my camp to verify. In terms of interior cells, two locations stand out, those being Vault 94, where you can find up to 8 fully charged fusion cores, and Watoga Underground, where you can find up to 6. In an overwhelming majority of runs, only some of the possible cores will spawn in, and the footage about to be shown was recorded over several different runs. In most cases, you can expect to find around half of the possible cores each time you visit one of these locations. In Vault 94, half of the possible cores are located in the southwestern corner of the atrium, on the ground floor, under the walkway. One will be on a bottom shelf to the left of the doorway leading towards the staircase to the greenhouses, and up to three cores may be clustered together on a shelf behind the staircase. Another core can be found in the second level maintenance room at the west end of the reactor room. Hold on. Son of a bitch! Next up, an additional core may be found sitting on the northwest corner of the westmost reactor. And finally, up to two cores may be clustered together on a shelf in the hallway leading to the door to access the Gek Wing. In Otoga Underground, the first core that you have the potential to find will be at the northern end of Garage 12, on the bottom level and near the staircase leading up to the junction. Next. On the northern wall of the junction, there may be a fusion core sitting on top of a piece of equipment between the doors leading to detailed depots 7 and 8. From there, the next possible core may be found at the northern end of detailing depot 7, on the lower level, sitting on top of a wooden crate. From there, you'll pass through an automotive maintenance area and come to a point where the terminal can be seen in an office to the right, overlooking another office with a locked door to the left, with a view of the first silo dead ahead. Enter the office on the right and unlock the terminal, which conveniently does not require any hacking perks to attempt, and select the option to unlock the door once you've guessed the correct password. Now, you can cross over into the other office and use the previously locked door to enter a large storage room, where you may find two fusion cores on the conveyor belt in the section of the room overlooking the maintenance bays. If the last few sentences sounded familiar, I totally didn't copy and paste them from the nuclear material script. Finally, the last possible core may be found just past the second silo, inside Garage A, sitting on a desk next to a terminal. While an overwhelming majority of events do not provide fusion cores as a reward, there are two notable exceptions. The Line in the Sand public event provides two fully charged fusion cores upon successful event completion, and fully charged cores will be rewarded for successfully completing a daily op if the event was completed with a weapon equipped that utilizes fusion cores for ammo. Uh... 
As a last resort, fusion cores can be crafted from any chemistry workbench by opening the crafting menu and navigating to the energy ammo tab. As with Ultrasight Fusion Cores, Ammo Smith and Ammo Factory will provide extra ammunition at no additional resource cost when crafting. If both perks are equipped and fully leveled, you'll receive four cores instead of just one for every core you craft. Depending on your character's intelligence, crafted cores may be overcharged by up to an extra 20%. I recommend acquiring cores via workshops and looting first, however, as crafting a core requires a piece of each type of flux in pure stabilized form. Given the scarcity of these materials and their usage in crafting Ultrasight ammo, this cost isn't justified in my opinion, even with ammo crafting perks equipped. The only exception to this would be cases in which you've fully exhausted your supply of on-hand cores and need a few to facilitate farming more. In addition to crafting cores directly, one core will be included with every Gatling laser or Ultrasight Gatling laser that you craft. While fusion cores can be purchased from some in-game vendors, such as traveling merchants and the White Spring Bunkers military wing, I wouldn't recommend purchasing from them unless absolutely necessary. As with any other type of ammunition in the game, you'll be getting the worst possible price. If you do end up having to purchase cores from an in-game vendor, make sure to first take a cam to temporarily boost your charisma and receive a lower price. While testing earlier, wearing 4 pieces of unyielding armor and taking a dose of Formula P brought the vendor price down to 288 caps, which is arguably justified given the amount of flux that it would take to craft cores, but still not optimal in my opinion. When it comes to perk cards, you have several options to aid you in getting the most out of your fusion cores. To start, equipping a fully leveled power user card will make your fusion cores last twice as long when inserted into power armor, and it will increase the 500 round per core clip size for Gatling and Ultrasight Gatling lasers to 999. This increased clip size is also applied to Ultrasight fusion cores used in Gatling lasers that have been modded with prime receivers. One thing to note is that when used as ammo, any core overcharge is ignored, as the clip size is capped at 999. Overall, this is a great card to have equipped if you use fusion cores, period, regardless of whether you're using them as an energy source for power armor or as ammunition. Next up, a fully leveled batteries included card will make all of your energy ammo weigh 90% less, reducing the weight of any standard or ultrasight fusion cores being carried to just 0.3 pounds. While I tend to avoid weight reduction perks if possible, the benefits of this perk outweigh the point costs if you frequently use power armor or gatling lasers, as it will allow you to keep a large number of cores on hand, which is especially beneficial when using fusion cores as ammunition, as even with increased clip sizes, you'll quickly eat through cores. To increase the lifespan of fusion cores inserted into power armor, equipping a fully leveled full charge perk card will eliminate the additional core consumption experienced when sprinting in, you guessed it, power armor. While I normally don't use this card myself, it can be useful to have on hand to temporarily equip if you find yourself running dangerously low on fusion cores and need to make every bit of remaining energy count. To greatly reduce the number of fusion cores consumed by your power armor, especially if frequently in combat, equipping a fully leveled electric absorption card as one of your character's legendary perks will provide you with a 20% chance of having your fusion core recharged each time you're hit with an energy attack. If you regularly run silos that have laser turrets in place, this perk will almost entirely eliminate the need to provide new cores for your power armor, as a single run will fully recharge your current core in most cases. Equipping the Scrounger perk card, which provides up to an 80% chance of finding extra ammo of a random type in ammo boxes, will increase the likelihood of finding fusion cores in said ammo boxes. When crafting standard or ultrasight fusion cores, I would highly recommend equipping fully leveled super duper ammo smith and ammo factory cards, as their combined impact will significantly increase your overall yield. A fully leveled super duper card provides a 30% chance of doubling the yield received for any item you craft, and is a good perk to have equipped when crafting in general. In terms of the ammo specific cards, equipping a fully leveled ammo smith card will provide you with 80% more rounds when crafting ammunition while equipping a fully leveled ammo factory card as one of your character's legendary perks will provide 150 more rounds when, you guessed it, also crafting ammunition. If both ammo smith and ammo factory are equipped, you'll receive 150% more rounds of the yield provided by ammo smith. 
For example, the normal yield for crafting 5mm rounds is 100 rounds, increased to 180 rounds by Ammo Smith, and to 450 rounds when both Ammo Smith and Ammo Factory are equipped. Add in the super duper perk, and the amount of extra ammo received is absolutely insane. Unless you are entirely a melee character, these are perks that you should not be ignoring. To end, I've got two final tips that you can use to extend the mileage of your fusion core supply out, particularly if you use fusion cores as ammunition. First off, if you're a Gatling user, I would highly recommend equipping your Gatling or Ultrasight Gatling laser, or both if you have them, with prime receivers if you've learned the plans to craft them or have obtained them in mod form, which will change the ammunition type of your Gatling to Ultrasight Fusion Cores and unlock the ability to craft said cores at a Tinkerer's Workbench if not already unlocked. While you will need two pieces of pure Violet Flux as well as two pieces of pure Crimson to equip the prime receiver, unless using a packaged weapon mod, plus one piece of pure Violet Flux and a scrap of Ultrasight each time you convert two Fusion Cores to Ultrasight Fusion Cores, the benefit strongly outweighs the cons, at least when using the ammo crafting perks that were previously mentioned. While a normal conversion to Ultrasight Fusion Cores is 1 to 1, with two Fusion Cores yielding two Ultrasight Fusion Cores, stacking Ammo Smith and Ammo Factory increases the yield of each conversion to 9 cores, meaning that for every two Fusion Cores you convert, you'll receive 4.5 times that in Ultrasight Cores, not even accounting for the extra cores provided by Super Duper if that perk is also equipped. Changing to a Prime Receiver and Ultrasight Fusion Cores will substantially extend your ammo supply if you frequently use Gatling lasers, and will greatly reduce the number of Fusion Cores required for ammo. If you also frequently use Power Armor, an additional benefit of this change is that you'll be separating out the Fusion Cores used as ammunition from the ones being used for your Power Armor. While Primed Gatling lasers tend to still generate a number of partially used cores, those cores will be Ultrasight Fusion Cores and not the same type of core utilized by your Power Armor, allowing you to more accurately gauge how many Fusion Cores you actually have left for your Power Armor and Ammo Conversions. As, unless you're frequently swapping between different suits of Power Armor, separating out the Ammo Cores will greatly reduce the number of partial Fusion Cores in your inventory. While this change will ultimately make you somewhat reliant on maintaining a supply of pure Violet Flux, Violet is arguably the easiest type of Flux to farm thanks to areas like the fields north of Grafton and around Cranberry Bog. For more on farming Flux in particular, check out my previous video on strategically nuking Grafton for farming Violet Flux. Secondly, if you do make the jump to a Prime Receiver and Ultrasight Ammo type, keep in mind that you can provide any two Fusion Cores for the Ultrasight conversion regardless of their charge. That means that any partially drained or even nearly empty fusion cores can be used to generate fully charged ultrasight cores. So in a way, the conversion offers a way to recycle your fusion cores into a very sustainable ammo type. That's it for this grind. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, and while you're at it, also hit subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to be notified when future videos like this one are posted. Also, tune in here every Tuesday at 7.30 Central for the weekly livestream, where I cover any new updates regarding Fallout 76 and answer any questions that you have about the game. And finally, also check out the Firebase channel on Twitch, where I stream sporadically throughout the week. I'll be back soon with another resource grind, but until then, and as always, for the Enclave.